what an amazing day to be here with you, to open up to these solar and galactic and planetary energies and to be of service. Why do we do what we do? We do what we do because we are awakening to that amazing human potential to be really conscious participants in this cosmic dream like never before or maybe once again and so today is a very special day we are here to be of service and that is the service of love the main guiding energy that is coming through the work that we do here at the green tara is the guidance of divine mother she has been guiding this work for many years and every day she adds a little layer and the layer is always a layer of service where we can serve her and we always do many of us meet every day online to be of service and also she adds layers of really her own awakening and revelation and so as we do what we do every day all of us we are always in service of love and this call is really a celebration it is a festival of light it's a very special moment in time and space for some of us this is summer solstice for a southern hemisphere this is winter solstice and we will be really actively bringing through these energies so everything that we do of course we want to be consciously participating because you know there are billions of people on this planet who really are not consciously participating but for us we can be these holy grails through which these energies will flow and we will multiply them and really plant these beautiful energies deep into the land of the earth so the call today will be a little bit of introduction so that we understand why we do what we do, which is always important. When we are of service, we need to have some background and see the big picture. <laughs> and then we will spend, so that will be about at the most 30 minutes of these energies really gathering here with us as we gather. And then for 30 minutes, we will do different activations. And they're going to be very quick activations, but several of them. One of them will be our own DNA activation as we step into these, you know, solar coatings that have been missing in our DNA. And then we will also be opening the sacred heart and calling upon the great ones and to bring through these energies because only a group can really get that kind of response. And the reason for that is that a group creates a pattern and that maybe one individual can have a really great light body that is visible to these beings of light. But when many of us, even just a few of us, but a group comes together, then of course that creates a pattern that is more visible and that's why the group gets more of a response. So that's what we're going to do today. So the call will be about an hour at the most and hopefully you can stay with us to go through all these activations. So <clears throat> the background, which is important to know always, is that we have been living in what the native people call the fourth world. And there is a good reason for all these different worlds to come and go, because of course, cosmic creation is really a big project that goes for zillions of years and within this zillions of years in human terms are different cycles now it's a kind of fun computer game when you think about creation because every thing is changing in every moment right now you might be thinking okay you know same time and space but actually that's not true because as you know you are in cosmos which is pretty vast with multitude of universes which already is also very vast and then within those universes you have galaxies and star systems and solar systems and then you find yourself here on planet earth everything around you and actually even inside of you is constantly spinning changing there are cycles within cycles within cycles and so this really gives the creator, if we want to use that word, the 
opportunity to always experience a whole new story. Nothing is ever really repeated. And this is really why creation exists. When you think about the Big Bang, the beginning of all times, then you know, and I'm just gonna, you guys don't need a video for this call. Just, I think it's not necessary, but if you want to have it, of course, have it. So as we have these cycles, then these cycles are constantly changing the conditions. So the Big Bang had that desire, really, because it's consciousness, it's, you know, creator, it's divinity exploding into infinite possibilities. And so the question was, who am I? And now the answer is, I am. And that is, I am all of that. And that is cosmos. And because we don't want any limitations, right, in all that is, so that's why we have cycles within cycles within cycles. And so it is like the most complex computer game where one day you are playing the game with conditions that seem so bright and light, like the golden age. Next day you want to change it up a little bit. So you go into darkness, like the dark ages, the Kali Yuga that we are now emerging from. And that is not at all a problem. That actually is the intention. So if you always were living in the golden age, it would kind of get boring and you would not get to know your full potential. But because you can change things up a little bit and you can have something like the, you know, Kali Yuga, um, which would be the dark ages. So then you know how strong you are and can you go through that scary house, you know? So it's like going to an entertainment park and of course you want to have different experiences and not all should just feel like, you know, a sunny ride through paradise. And so we are now coming out of the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is definitely what we would call the dark age. But again, it's all by design. Everything is by design. There is no problem ever, but everything is evolving. And so what happened during this Kali Yuga age for us as humans, we kind of, we have that term, we fell from grace. Well, what it really means is that we disconnected from the love of Divine Mother for different reasons. And the big fall for us came during Atlantis. But again, we want to see everything as evolutionary process. And so, yes, we had to disconnect from Divine Mother and we, you can see how that worked out for us um, in terms of our relationship with Mother Nature that she is and with in the relationship with um, our own sacred hearts, but also our bodies and with our planet. So we came to this point where we are again going to go through a big transition, just like what we had at the end of the last cycle. So for us, we want to look at the small cycle, the small cycle that kind of ended with the great flood at the end of Atlantis. And now we have been living in this cycle since then. And this is a cycle in which Divine Mother is going to come back fully. And she is coming back fully. And what is really happening is that because she had to be disconnected from us and we had to disconnect from her again for many different reasons. And so we lived in this society that was very much brain based, reason based and very patriarchal instead of matriarchal. Um, I often perceive Divine Mother as the rainbow serpent of creation and it is really she is the soul of the earth but when you look at the entire cosmos you will see that all life force moves actually um, as kind of rainbow serpent it is a light that is conscious and creates worlds and so in our world the soul of the earth is now really awakening from a long dream and we too have been sleeping as people say you know we are waking up and what does it mean to go through awakening well we are still asleep just so that you know even though it feels like we are waking up yes we are in the process of waking up and even if we say you know i am fully awake it is actually not possible to be fully awake in a world that is still sleeping or still not fully awake but we are coming to a point where the awakening will actually be global because the rainbow serpent of creation, Divine Mother, is going to wake up from her own dream. 
We have mystics who speak about uh, goddess Sophia, and it's a great story too, because that also can explain what's happening. So it is also Sophia coming back into this world. Uh, she is awakening from her own dream, and with her, we all are going to wake up too. And a great way to think about it is to think about the story of the Sleeping Beauty, because that really explains so beautifully how this world in a way got frozen and we all are dreaming just like in the matrix you know we are dreaming this world but we forgot that we were dreaming and so the big awakening is coming and this is all just the process that is evolutionary it is intended to be this way and it is nice for us to participate even though we are still in that dream and so the dream that is about to we are about to wake up from and what it really means to awaken also is a good question you know people think that awakening is when you start seeing energy when you see other beings when you suddenly realize that there are worlds around us that are galactic and maybe people communicate with all these worlds and start channeling there is one way to think about awakening but really awakening is not about seeing Awakening partially could be about seeing because, you know, the earth had to be disconnected from this web of life that connects everything in the cosmos. And that is what we are now restructuring. We are resetting not only our reality, but also we are really resetting the light body of the earth so that the rainbow serpent, her own soul, can emanate from her fully again. So awakening really means the awakening of the divine mother within awakening means that we awaken again the sacred heart through which she comes divine mother is really a being she's consciousness she's energy and she has of course the energy and the consciousness of pure love now love in cosmic terms is magnetism and so our earth will change her electromagnetic field. What that will do is that number one, it will restore the axis within the earth that was tilted and distorted, which disconnected us from the cosmic understanding of who we truly are. It also diminished our brain, which now means that we've had right and left hemisphere, which really diminishes our perception of reality. It also diminishes our ability to actually be in love with life, with a capital L, which Divine Mother calls herself Goddess Life. And so we are really going through this incredible change on so many different levels. And as you can tell from what is being shared here is that it's not so much about just you and me. It is so much about the Earth herself. Now, the Earth, of course, is a being and it's unimaginable, maybe, to think of a being as a round sphere that is a planetary body. You can call her planetary logos, you can call her Divine Mother, you can call her Lady Gaia, whatever names we choose, it doesn't really matter. But she is a conscious being of incredible bounty. Of course, it got diminished through our own doing here. But once again, there is nothing that is really wrong it is just changing and so this being is really what our galactic consciousness is trying to help us restore fully and that is what's going to happen our planet earth seems to be a physical planet but at the same time of course everything in creation is physical and non-physical and so most people do not perceive the non-physical but every planet and every being has a physical and non-physical aspect to them and that doesn't mean that they have to be in the third dimension as we have it here but also when you think about the galactic beings that many of you work with like the pleiadians arcturians syrians they too are considered physical beings even though their form is very different from us when it comes to the etheric quality of the form and so our galactic creation is really a physical creation, but also non-physical. And so 
also our planet has a non-physical body and she will become even more etheric as we go through this big transition which will really is taking place it started taking place in 2019 and you definitely notice big changes on planet earth part of which is of course um what people call the virus but it's all a very positive change for the earth herself and now it's up to us to participate in this so that she can become a complete world once again the way she uh, explains what it means to be a complete world is that we are about to restore her own rainbow body so that she's completely surrounded by this magnetic emanation of love that of course in cosmic terms would be magnetic energy magnetic energy around a planet will give her once again protection from all different you know um what we would call interferences because it will create really a portal through which only something equally beautiful or higher can come through but also it is up to us to be part of this adventure and to recreate our own rainbow bodies and as you know we have so many mystics and so many traditions all around the world whether it was yogis or the mystics gnostics essenes tibetan buddhism buddhism so speaking about the rainbow body and that is really important the rainbow body really is the emanation um, of the planet herself moving through us through the sacred open heart and then the cosmic energies that we can call again the rainbow serpent of creation as a cosmic being coming also through us and um, in yogic traditions they would call it the dance of the shiva and shakti that can only happen when we have an open heart and really it's a portal and you know portals <laughs> when they are closed nothing can come through when they open they open so it is up to us to open the own rainbow portal within our hearts so <clears throat> when you think of the cosmic fabric of creation of course everything is a web it is a web of life and i think uh, some of you shared that scientists have actually discovered this web scientifically and then they find that in the cosmos everything is connected by a web and that is true uh, when you do your seeing through your third eye you will see that everything is absolutely interconnected into one cosmic web and so one cosmic web that connects everything that's how we can understand our oneness nothing is ever disconnected nothing ever is how could it <laughs> there is just one cosmos one cosmic body one cosmic being there's only source and creation so there's really just two and this is what the mystics perceived it as um, in the Kabbalah, which I think is a great representation of the cosmic web. Now, what happened on planet Earth is that we got disconnected from this cosmic web because of the incredible, um, I guess, let's call it that fall from grace, which is the disconnect from Divine Mother, which is that all beings go into this amnesia, all beings fall asleep, really and then nobody remembers anything. And so it's very hard to live in a dream within a dream. But again, this is now the year 2021 and we are restoring our own planetary fabric so that we can perfectly fit into this cosmic web. So this is the ideal planetary fabric that will be restored. And we've, you know, all of us have been working on this just by being here really embodied on this planet and bringing our own light and constantly working on our own, you know, light body, rainbow body. We, we come here really to be an ingredient in this, to give our own rainbow body and light body to our beautiful mother earth. Now, a lot of people are talking about the solar flash and it's good to mention what it is and why it is. Some people call it the event. Well, you know, everything on planet Earth is really connected to the solar logos and not only the sun as we know it, but of course the sun behind the sun and beyond the sun and we have, you know, the central spiritual sun and really all suns are smaller representations of source 
and everything in creation always is stepped down in intensity so that you never really burn yourself and so because it's high voltage energy of course source itself as a physical creation of course if you were to touch the big bang you probably immediately die or you know um, stop existing and so that's why source steps its own energies down through these solar logos through these solar bodies that are of course also beings so every sun is a being just like the earth is a being now on planet earth there would be no life without solar light and so even today as we celebrate this solstice it is a solar event and so for some of us we get more solar codes today southern hemisphere has the opposite um, so the winter solstice where the sun doesn't rise above the south pole for today and uh, our evolution as species is always completely connected to solar light it would be wise for us to always work consciously with the solar logos whether it is the physical sun or the suns that are to be perceived with our third eye or, or you know through our souls and when you think about the soul then we would call it solar light so our dna is physical and non-physical and it evolves with light it is a light code and of course on the physical level when you expose dna to solar energy which is plasma then the dna really can be recoded it evolves and so everything in us really evolves with the solar energy and it's important to understand how solar light really affects everything on planet earth and so to understand these cycles and why they are so important and why we celebrate these festivals of solar events is because our evolution is always directed by the solar light not only physically but also spiritually and so the solar flash many of you maybe have experienced it already in your meditation in your dream state i started to experience the solar flash in especially the middle of the night last year and i experienced it about four times but it was already at the point where other people were reporting it that they would meditate and suddenly they experienced the solar flash so it definitely is an event that is happening in our consciousness and our bodies that are part of this big evolution are being prepared for a very intense influx of solar and galactic light this is something that the mystics have known about forever and they talked about how the light will travel travel from the galactic core it will move through different sources of light then it will come to us through our own sun so whether it is going to be physical non-physical uh, it doesn't matter really it is something that is planned as our evolutionary reset and it is the most positive event we can really experience and if you have experienced it in your meditation so i bet that it changed you because it changes our nervous system it makes it more refined and our consciousness is deeply connected to our nervous system and it is an event that changes also the, the dysfunction in the brain so whatever we had diminished in our brain we will step much more into and not just much more we will actually step completely into this reunited brain and we will be able to perceive reality as is this also will reset the planetary grid of mother earth and it will really energetically as this plasma comes it will get rid of all the nonsense all the misused life force and it will restore that beautiful divine feminine energy because the earth really is part of divine mother's body her cosmic body and so with the solar flash everything will be restored and what's really beautiful about this event is that it will really delete all the ancient memories of dysfunction and of the misuse of life force because there is no reason to remember anything <laughs> there is only a reason to have a fresh start and that's what this will do for us so today we are now stepping into the activation part of this event 
our goal that we were given or as a task. So last time on June 10th, we were activating the waters of the earth as the waters told us that they would start emanating this magnetic love. So that was a very successful activation. And today the activation is for the land of the earth. So we received very specific steps. So we're just going to follow the step by step. Part of it again is for you to activate your DNA and then part of it will be a transmission that we do for the earth. What is really important on planet earth is that we do have consciousness as a collective. And as you can imagine, if you have, you know, 8 billion people who are in lower consciousness, it creates certain level of reality. And then if you have enough people who really step up the game and they uh, reside and exist in higher levels of consciousness, which really is love and oneness, that is the same as our awakening. Our awakening truly is awakening of the heart. And it is awakening of the understanding that really there is only one cosmic web. And then so everyone in that web must be just one. And so we all are one. We are fractals of source. And we are fractals who really, when they step into this amazing knowing that all life is just one and that love is the principle that holds everything together, then that's all we need to do and be and really embody it in all that we do physically, mentally, emotionally, etherically. It is just those two principles, the principle of love and oneness. And so here we are a small collective, but there's a lot of beautiful events happening today on planet earth and i know some of you are holding beautiful events too so it's about creating this collective coherence and this is something that scientists have studied and they realize that if we have enough people who come together and they hold the same vision or they are in the same frequency which is achieved through music mainly music of the heart really <laughs> then we can create a very positive change on planet earth so never um underestimate the power that you have within you and the power of our collective. The way that the sacred heart is best opened is through your own reconnection with your own child within. And, you know, people think about the inner child as someone who was wounded, but let's go beyond the wounding because that's just part of the dysfunction we've had on planet Earth. Let's go back to that innocence of the child, the true innocence. And you can just think of yourself as the newborn, or you can think of your newborn if you have children, you know, that beautiful heart opening and that complete innocence and that desire to love or to be loved. And that, you know, it's a gift of life. And the gift of life is the gift of the mother, really, because she moves through women, divine mother. And the rainbow serpent of creation is a matriarchal really lineage so every time a woman gives birth to a child it is passing on the lineage of the rainbow serpent and so if we can connect with this really sacred heart then from that place we can call upon the great ones receive a transmission that we will then not only use for ourselves but mainly we will use it to send it to mother earth so this is our process here today and to get into the sacred heart, use whatever technique you can use, but it is a shift in energy. And this is all about energy. An activation or a transmission really is not something that happens through words. It happens through a feeling. And so our feeling nature becomes a state. And it is a state of emanation. And we know that consciousness is directly connected to our state of our emanation of the heart. So when we say high consciousness, high consciousness is an emanation of love, what some people call Christ consciousness. It is love that illuminates the world without any you know, differences. It doesn't see anything. It's just illuminating the world. So we're going to use a video. Uh, it's a transmission of Ma chant. I invite you to chant along. It's important to create a frequency. And this is a specific technique I was given by Divine Mother. So hold your heart. You can watch the video that I put together some images that hopefully open our heart, connect with the earth. But also 
feel your own heart maybe put your hands on your heart chant ma and awake awaken <laughs> the sacred heart within so that it has the power of magnetism that can be transmitted this is a two minute 22 second video and there is a good reason for that because divine mother always uses codes and the code for today's activation is code 22 so we're gonna go along so if you just want to put your hands on the heart chant ma create the frequency and feel the sacred heart ma. Wonderful. So we should be all in our hearts with a big smile, just like the babies. And we are ready for our own DNA activation. As you know, DNA creates sacred geometry, not only within you, it also creates sacred geometry around you. And it is DNA that connects us deeply to Divine Mother. It is DNA that connects us deeply to the earth. And so before we do a transmission for her, we first will step into our own fullness. This is just a four minute DNA activation. So as you are in your heart, receive. Cellular activation. Feel all of your energy coming together. A new sense of wholeness within. Simply by having the intention to do so. Call light to yourself right now. Filling yourself with light. Sense yourself becoming more whole and complete within. You are gaining access to more parts of your being, the multidimensional self that you are. You can quicken your vibration and open up to higher levels of your being. For you are a magnificent being of light. Sense the solar light 
the light of the soul plane, the soul of the sun, the light of beauty and perfection, of higher purpose and love shining down upon you. Your soul's presence is like a radiant light, the touch of an angel, for your soul is love itself. Feel your soul radiating through you. And from this place of light, sense the cells in your body. Picture them now. And your soul is going to draw the solar light into itself and then transmit that light to your cells, activating the very core of your being all the way down to your atomic level, activating more light within you to accelerate your evolution. This is happening because you have affirmed that you are ready and you are opening to receive right now this light as it comes from your soul into every cell of your body, activating the codes of evolution. Your soul is now charging itself with solar light. And then in a burst of light, transmitting this light to the center of every cell in your body once again. Even more light is being activated within you. New lines of light being built all throughout your bodies, physical, emotional, and mental bodies, bringing light to every level of your being. Feel the new level of radiance within you as you have activated yourselves and accelerated your evolution. saw with your inner sight what happened and how this activation took place and what it really meant for us and for those who see I know there is just miracles happening every day and so we're going to take this to the next level and that will be the activation of the land we will do it in two different stages and this is how it was given to us so for those of you who have participated in these calls, you might know that a miracle happened on the 5th of May this year, and we participated in the opening of something that sounds very science fiction like, and that is a Stargate. It is a natural cosmic occurrence that actually changed the coordinates of the Earth. And again, it sounds like science fiction, and that's okay because we are actually in a science fiction kind of movie. This cosmic science fiction allows us at times to participate in something so miraculous that it really required a collective effort of beings on planet Earth as well as beings that I would call the Kachinas that the Hopi people speak about. And um, I was actually in Sedona participating in this and it was unbelievable. And you guys, we did a call, so you know, the Stargate actually opened on 555 and what it did is that it really shifted the earth to a whole new space. So really it's like changing, like if you had a spaceship, you change the coordinates and that's what happened for the earth. And that means that we are now exposed to light that we have never been exposed to before that is coming through the Stargate, which is open and it is uh, coded with 555. Now, 
I only share this because I've seen it. I was there, I participated in it like kind of etherically, which is how many of these things happen. And so being able to witness it, I promise you this was exceptional, uh, something I've never ever seen before. And we were not alone. Obviously, this was a cosmic event. So now this light coming from this five, five, five star gate is very different. And that allowed us further shifts and activations of the earth so I would call it great success. So today, as we call upon the guardians of our evolution, I put here, you know, all the guides that um, I work with, but they guide this work mainly because they connected us to the levels of creation of Divine Mother. You can call upon any beings that you work with as long as you know that they are very high beings of, uh, of you know, as guardians of maybe ascended masters, whatever it is. And we will be using an kind of call as a group call and chant om so definitely chant om out loud because that's how we are heard and seen as a collective so this is an 11 minute transmission and it is really a call and we will be sending light and consciousness and this energy that we receive from the great ones we will be sending it into the earth so what you can do and that's something that i highly recommend is have a crystal or if you have anything that represents the earth so like i have a crystal that has um, the continents painted on it or whatever it is if you can have that in your hand and for the final part of this um where we after we receive the energy transmitted directly into the earth and really plant it deeply into her with your love and also think about that light as you inhale it and call it in it's coming through the stargate which is enabling us to perform miracles on planet earth you can sit on the earth if you are outside that's fantastic and definitely just follow the uh, guidance that we have from Orin. this is 11 minutes and again the goal is to plant kind of as if you're planting seeds we are planting love into the earth so 11 minutes Greetings from Oren. You have done a wonderful job of linking with all the other groups. There is a network of light extending all the way around the planet. Sense yourself as a group, as part of a group, this group and everyone who is joining in on the inner and outer. We are going to create a group call to the Great Ones. We are going to tell them we are ready to receive directly this energy that they are sending that is providing the impulse of evolution for humanity at this time. These great ones play with energies and forces. They can only send energy when a group of people have requested it. For their energy is so powerful that a group needs to receive it and then distribute it to others. You're going to send out a group call, an individual openness to receive these energies of transformation of divine will that are now being made available to humanity. We are asking to be receivers and transmitters of these energies so that we may bring our own lives into greater alignment with the divine plan and purpose of our lives. And so that we may help carry forward the evolution of humanity, the evolution of the animal and plant and mineral kingdom. So let us sound the sacred Om and make it our call to say we are ready to receive. So take a deep breath and we're going to do a continuous ohm, three or four ohms in a row. 
and you can choose any note you want. What a heavenly choir of human voice. The great ones have heard your call. They are aware of you. And now be silent, very silent within. The energy will come into your head center, flow all the way down to the base of your spine. Some of you may even sense a gentle, cool flame of light rising up through your chakras, purifying them. So take a breath and open to receive. This flame of light, this divine will is burning away all impurities that are ready to leave at this time. Denser energies, perhaps energies you have taken on from others are being released. There is an enormous influx of light, a higher light, the light of your soul and spirit, the solar light. And this light of will is moving through your body, your emotions and your mind. Cutting through obstacles, awakening new consciousness, moving energy within you. moving you forward to the next level of your growth. And another wave of divine will will be sent, so take a breath again. This is going to be the will that awakens the heart. And bring it into your heart. Now.
Imagine your heart growing radiant like a sun. Linking with the heart centers of everyone around. Linking with the heart centers of the masters and guides. Connecting with the heart centers of other light workers. This is the will that makes all things whole, that heals and nurtures, is soft and gentle. The will of goodness. Of wanting to do that which is good and kind and right. Let this spread throughout you and into all light workers. And connecting upward with the heart center of God to all that is. The love that takes that which is different and finds the underlying oneness, the underlying unity, is now flowing into each one of you. Beautiful. So let us in by holding a vision of an awakened humanity where love and goodwill is the keynote, where the actions taken are those that bring unity, where the forms that are built reflect light, where there's respect for the earth and all life on it. If enough people hold this vision, it will become a reality. Come back when you are ready. And with that, I bid you good day for now. So this is a very powerful receiving. I hope everybody enjoyed the receiving part as well as the transmitting part. We have one more um, activation and this will be the final one. It's a very short one, just four minutes. And I received specific instructions. So if you can stay for this, um, this is really the most important one. It's obvious that we've been building up to this. This is the one where we anchor love through the portal of Lake Titicaca. So I, you know, always ask Divine Mother what it is she wants us to do. And this was her specific instructions. Um, so it is 77 of us here, which is a wonderful number. You know, all is coded always. And so it is always her speaking in numbers. The rainbow serpent of creation, she actually, it is her body that becomes the numbers. And so whenever you see codes, codes, it is her body speaking to you, her consciousness. So always pay attention. Today's code, so if we can, if you've been to Lake Titicaca, that's wonderful. It is in Peru, between Peru and Bolivia, so South America. This is an aerial shot. So if we can really step into this as a collective of this amazing consciousness that we stand really on the shores of this beautiful portal. This is the portal of the rainbow serpent of creation. This is a new portal. This is the portal for the new earth. So, you know, she moves throughout the earth, but this is where we can best communicate with divine mother and the rainbow serpent of creation at this moment. Whenever whenever we work with like, like Titicaca, we actually are working on the new earth. She gave me something very specific. So first of all, the greatest way to show up is in your light body or surround yourself in a quartz crystal. Let us envision that all 77 of us are standing on the shores. 
And then she gave me the symbol. She gave me the symbol of love, light and will. It is a 22 pointed star that was used by the mystics. This also happens to be the earth star. And the number 22 is the number of the archetypes we have as humanity. If you are familiar with archetypes that Carl Gustav Jung studied, then you know that we have 22 archetypes that repeat throughout the world in all traditions. There's 22 of them. There is a good reason for that. It is the journey of uh, being through different initiations. Today is the final initiation. It is during the summer solstice. And so we will be envisioning this 22 pointed star that also theosophy so alice bailey helena blavatsky used as a symbol so this is a simplified version of it it contains codes the code is the solar logos it is the syrian archangelic league of the light it is christ consciousness it is planetary logos it is you know everything is activating for us so if you can use the visualization of this 22 pointed star love light well and send it with your intention into the lake titicaca we will listen to a native american chant which is a blessing and during that chant if you can repeat out loud i am love and anchor that love into Lake Titicaca and she will transport all the codes into the entire planet Earth, into all the land. So this is an amazing activation. And just so that you know, uh, I highly recommend working with the tarot cards, especially some of them. These ones are the Egyptian Toth cards that represent how the 22nd card actually, because they start with a zero, and it is the universe it is the end of the story but it's also a new beginning which is the zero it is the full and so the journey that we as humanity as planet earth are coming to an end and a new beginning is when the kundalini of the universe starts again dancing with all the elements and the eye of god horus is watching this amazing cosmic dance it's a magical moment to be alive this is pretty much the story the story that comes to a new beginning, the fool, so that the fool can again go through all the different 22 stages and to be initiated. So that's us. Now, one of the major guides that has been working through uh, this group is Hathor, and she appears to us uh, in the physical reality. And she asked last night to be part of this because she works with tones. She will be sending activation through us. Um, Hathor is not just an Egyptian goddess that would be diminishing who she really is. She is really the godmother of creation. She is the one who came from source to sing songs to create worlds. So as we now focus on Lake Titicaca, all of us in your light body, in your crystal body, and then sending once again, the beautiful 22 pointed star into the lake and having our hands just like Hathor transmitting energy. I will leave Hathor here or the lake. I don't know which one is better, but let's do Hathor. So this is only, uh, four minutes so that's the final one and with that we are anchoring love i am love into the lake and it will just be taken into all of uh land on planet earth so
And maybe you can place your beautiful hands of light into this portal of Divine Mother and bless her with your love because it is the love of the child that calls the mother. It is the call of our hearts for her to return fully, to wake up from this dream so that we can dream with her the new dream where we will know that we are dreaming and we will be creating very beautiful dreams. Thank you everyone who participated in this incredible activation. This is magical time. And again, this makes a huge difference to this planetary ascension process. And even though maybe this seems like a small collective, it is about the quality of our light bodies that gather here. And I know many of you activated your light body and many of you already know why you're here and you do what you do <laughs> because that's your mission. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is very big. So if you can go into nature and really anchor this beautiful love into her plant, all those seeds of love into the earth. I'm super, super grateful for your participation, for your love, for your willingness to be part of this huge adventure and for being here now. So thank you so much. Blessings to you.